first question you might have is why did I need to go and build something when there's a wide variety of different boat configurations on the market? Couldn't I have just picked one of those? And for most people, most situations, I would tell people, you know, don't build a boat. Boats are only, it's, they're only if you really want to build a boat or if you want to, you want something that's so specific, so customized that, you know, you can't find such a thing. And that's kind of the case with me, although I do enjoy building boats. So in this case, I wanted something that would be very, very compact and very small and very inexpensive. I didn't really want it to cost a lot. If I was going to customize it a lot, it might not work out. I wasn't sure of that. Uh, it was just kind of like baby steps with this thing and multiple configurations to get it right. And, and it didn't cost a lot, and I had fun doing it. Uh, I know people tow boats behind trailers. It wasn't something I wanted to do. It had to be lightweight and something that I could manage to move around on my own. This was my first attempt in the summer of 2016. I bought a Seahawk 2 for $50 at Walmart and built the, the wooden insert that you see there, the seat, and I would g use a small, very, very small trolling motor to go fishing with it. Uh, one time I, I had the boat out with my wife in it and, you know, we were like, she was, I was in the back facing forward and, and she was in the front facing back and our knees were in the way. It was very, very hard to row the boat. It was one of those lakes that wouldn't let you use motors. So I had my sights set on a Seahawk 3 for this season, and I picked one up in the spring for around $100 Canadian, and set about making a wooden insert for it, wooden floor, with the improvements that I considered making. Uh, so here's my first configuration. I has I just commercial boat seats in there. It's got the steering in there, the wooden floor, uh, as you see it there now. And we actually tried this out. I used it for about four or five days of fishing, and I didn't find that the seats were that comfortable if you're in there for, for two, two or three hours, it's hard to, to bend around if the fish is behind you, and it just it really wasn't ideal. So I thought to improve the legroom situation and make it so you can, there's just a bit more room in the boat for stuff, I, I wanted to raise the seating position as you see here. Now that wooden insert is now in the aft position on the, on the floor part of it. Uh, you can see that the bottom piece has a... Um, a three quarter inch piece of plywood that where it could be the whole thing can be mounted forward here here it is with the insert mounted forward and that would be where I would have it if it was just me in the boat and I wanted to keep my weight far forward so the boat would get up and plane much easier it would just bog down if I was too far aft um, so this is the way I typically always have it set up and and I've gone fishing with this thing oh I would say probably seven eight nine ten days with it set up like this and it, it worked out quite well here here i am you know at the shore about about to head out with the boat this is as configured i haven't hooked the motor up to the steering yet but uh that's about that's all that's left to do so you can see it's pretty congested there with all the fishing gear and life jackets and stuff but there is enough room for for one and probably you could get two in there i haven't tried it yet but you probably could so this is this is i think the boat was moderately successful like this this is the wooden insert uh, there's storage. Uh, those seats are hinged, and there's a little bit of storage in there. It's not a lot of room, but you can, you know, you can put your safety equipment in there and your some of your fishing tackle or boating equipment. Um, that piece there is is fairly light, and it screws uh, with wood screws up from the bottom of the of the of the flat floor in the boat. Here's the boat up on the the car. I can lift the entire thing myself. Uh, it's not something I would try with a good car because you the way I do it is I with two guys you could do it two people but with one person I push the boat up against the side and just kind of slide it up the side of the car and get it up on, on top of the roof that way and, and you know if you had a car with nice paint you would wreck it so here is uh, the rest of the video here is is me setting the boat up and showing you some of the features uh, it fits completely in a hockey bag in the hockey bag it weighs 25 pounds so it's it's quite manageable the trick with this thing is to get all the air out of it when you when you deflate it. Uh, it's not too hard to inflate. I I bought myself a little 12 volt inflator and I just plug it into a battery and let it inflate away. You you, you fill the bottom up first. Uh, you can see me just unfolding it here on the table. Uh, doesn't take a long time. Uh, there it is. Bottom the bottom chamber is filled at this point you take the boat and you sit it in the in the in the you take the insert and you set the boat uh the insert into the boat and you kind of tuck it into the sides in the corners and that's what holds it in place is basically the uh it, it it sits into the cavity that's formed and between the sides of the boat when they're filled and the and the floor and it's quite snug you you wouldn't if you wouldn't be able to pull it out let's just say that if it was all inflated so 
this is important it's worth doing and of course you don't want to damage the boat so just be careful when you're doing it um, and then from that point on you would inflate the middle chamber the sort of the beige section you see there uh, you know to a comfortable level um, and then you inflate the final chamber which would be the mostly the green outer ring there now if I understand correctly the boat would be you could puncture a chamber even maybe the outer chamber and it would still take its you know load of 600 pounds I'm not sure that's true I haven't tried it but that is the idea uh, haven't had any punctures so far uh, with with either of the two boats so I have a seven and a half horsepower uh, air-cooled Sears outboard here. Uh, it's very, very lightweight. The motor itself only weighs uh, 40 pounds. Uh, these motors uh, sometimes come with integral gas tanks, which would be a nice feature on a small boat. Um, I have a few of those in the garage as well. This is me connecting the steering to the wooden bracket that I made to attach to the 7.5 to allow it to steer. Uh, it's just it's just remote steering. You still, if you want to you know, put it in gear, you have to turn around and change the gear lever it only goes it's only neutral and forward on this motor and the throttle you'd have to reach back but that's not really a problem given the size of the boat so steering works works quite nice I just like to be facing forward when I'm on the boat you know I'm my back and neck are not so good that I want to be in a twisted position all day long while I'm fishing and powering the boat so I prefer this and it also allows me to get you know well forward in the boat which is where the weight needs to be when you're trying to get it moving so here's some storage here. Uh, not a lot in there, but it's, it's enough to put some stuff, some ropes. or uh, There's a rod holders in the back there. Um, showing some details of the motor. Uh, you can see the Teleflex cable steering system there. I just attach it to the boat with uh, tie wraps and if as you move the boat back and forth or if you had to take the thing off I just cut the tie wraps off and put some new ones on uh, I put a uh, a piece of I don't know it's heater hose from a car or something that I'd split down the middle just to protect the uh, teleflex steering cable uh, there you can see it right there it's uh, wrapped around it um, holds it good if you're just moving the seat the seat uh, assembly backwards and forwards you wouldn't need to move the the teleflex uh, cable system it could stay where it was if you want to remove it completely from the boat yes you can uh, now it, it is possible um, some lakes I've gone to they won't let you bring motors and, and if you're if if you are doing that I just take the teleflex steering and the seat assembly completely off the boat and it, it doesn't row too bad uh, in that situation 